Hey guys, Ellie here. Today, I bring to you another episode of Tuesday Talks. Today's talk is going to be about doing things by the book. Now, doing things by the book is a phrase that people use a lot. It basically just means to do something according to standard procedure. Now, this is usually a good thing. Standard procedure is typically the easiest way to do something, the safest, just the simplest way to do anything in life. That's why it's called the standard procedure. It's the standard thing that you should do in a certain scenario. So most of the time, doing things according to standard procedure is a good thing. However, there are a few instances where you can be so caught up in doing things by the book or doing things according to standard procedure that you're afraid to do something a little bit different. And as a result, you ruin something that could have been great. Something happened recently that put this topic on my heart. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Last week, for those of you who don't know, my dad and Jamie had a baby deer that was found on their property. It was a little doe, a girl. Now, it's not unusual for baby deer to be seen by themselves in the wild. The mother deer will a lot of time leave the babies on their own so that they don't pick up a strong scent and that they're not noticeable by predators. The mothers will periodically go back and check on the deer time to time throughout the day. So it's not odd to see this. However, this baby was obviously abandoned by its mom permanently. Whether the mom died, whether the mom just decided that this baby wouldn't survive anyway, so she just ditched it because a lot of times mothers will do that in the wild instinctively. We don't know why it was on its own but it was dehydrated, it was malnourished, and you could tell by the way its ears were curled that it wasn't doing too hot physically. So this baby would have died if it had been left there on its own. My dad and Jamie took it upon themselves to rescue this baby, to nurture it, to bottle feed it, petting it, showing love and affection to it, the same way you would with a baby goat, with a human baby, really, with anything. Now this is the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do according to the standard procedure. The by the book thing that you do when you find an abandoned baby deer or abandoned wildlife that's young in that way is you take it to a wildlife rehabilitation center. And what they'll do there is they'll raise it back to health, but they'll do it in a hands-off sort of way. They'll try to have as little human interaction as possible with the baby. And the reason why is because when you end up releasing it back into the wild someday, you want its senses to be alert and you want it to not want to come near humans because obviously there's a lot of I really apologize for that noise in the background it's irritating me so bad I'm gonna let it pass okay there we go <laughs> where was I yeah the reason that rehabilitation centers want to be hands-off with these uh, babies that they're trying to raise back to health is so that when you release it back into the wild someday it doesn't want to run towards humans because in the wild there's a lot of hunters so if this animal associates humans as a good thing it might run up to a hunter trying to get animal crackers and it'll get shot and killed but if it associates humans as a bad thing if it runs when it senses human presence like it's supposed to then it's more likely to not get shot by a hunter. Initially, my dad and Jamie were allowed to keep the baby deer. They consulted the game warden around here and they covered all their bases to make sure that it was okay. And for reasons I won't get into, they're not allowed to take care of the baby deer anymore. It's now gonna go to a wildlife rehabilitation center like standard procedure says it should. So let me explain to you guys why in this very unique case, doing things by the book is going to get in the way of something that could have been great. So, for one, there's something called CWD, chronic waste disease, running very rampantly in the wild right now amongst deer, amongst elk, amongst other animals like that. So sending this baby back into the wild greatly increases its chances of contracting CWD and dying anyways, truly. Number two, and the much more important one to me is that this deer wasn't just found by anybody. It'd be one thing if this deer had been rescued by somebody who maybe 
didn't take the time to do the research and how to properly care for their animals and didn't give it a high quality of life, then in that case, it probably makes a lot more sense for it to go to a wildlife rehabilitation center. But this deer was found by I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. I'm a Survivor Sanctuary takes time to diligently research all of their animals to give them the most high quality lives that you could possibly imagine. They have given countless animals that came from abuse and came from different horrible situations a new safe haven, a forever home if you will. And number two, I'm a Survivor Sanctuary has a platform on social media that reaches millions and millions of viewers. The animals that are showcased in the I'm a Survivor Sanctuary videos have impacted and changed countless lives over the past few years. They are inspirational. They teach you so many life lessons about how we can be better people. They live a very simple way of life. They help to just be calm and relaxing and to slow things down. When we humans get in the habit of doing things too fast, I could go on and on all day about how the animals are inspirational and how they've impacted me but that's a different story for a different day. Bottom line is Elvira, the deer that had been rescued, in the one week that she was here, in the one week that she was in videos, in the one week that the viewers got to see her and that we got to share her life with you guys, she made a super strong impact. Take a look at these comments right here. Take a look at the inspiration, the impact, just the overall sheer impact that Elvira, the rescued deer, had on people in only one week. Powerful, right? It would have been a lifetime of this for her. It would have been years and years of this. People even said that Elvira was reminiscent of Journey. If you don't know who Journey is, Journey is a goat that we had. She passed away about a year ago, but she might have been the most inspirational animal that we've ever had because she was a disabled goat yet she never let it hold her back she always when she got knocked down physically she would like get up and she would shake the shake the dust off and try it again she never gave up she was just so powerful just such an impact on countless lives and they say that uh, many people said that elvira was reminiscent of that she was like journey and so that right there is what we no longer have all of that impact all of that is what has been taken away because of doing things according to standard procedure, doing things by the book. And so I think y'all get what I'm saying is that a lot of that sometimes it's okay to do things differently. Let me give you guys another example that I think of when I think about doing things by the book. Okay, right here, I have a verse from the Bible pulled up. It's Luke chapter 13. Jesus is about to do something that is definitely not by the book and is for sure against standard procedure. Let's get right into it. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, there are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, you hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water it? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? As he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the people rejoiced at all the glorious things done by him. Don't you guys see how, even in that story right there, doing things by the book could have gotten in the way of something great? Jesus saw that woman, that poor, innocent soul, and didn't care what day it was, gave no thought to um, this or that. He just saw her and said, you know what? I feel bad for her. I want her to be better. And he went over there and he made her better. And it was the ruler of the synagogue who had his head so far in the gutter because he was concerned about a work being done on the Sabbath day. His head so, his face buried so far 
into that one rule that he missed the bigger picture the bigger picture of a woman a human life being made better being freed from her affliction and so i the whole hypocritical part is besides the point but the point is is that even in life we can have our heads so far up the gutter we can have our head buried so far into a certain rule into a certain cliche into a certain doing things by the book thing that we miss the bigger picture and so there's been many times in my life where i have tried so hard to do something the way that it's supposed to be done that if i had just done it a simpler way even if it's not the typical way it would have made things so much better for myself and it would have made things so much better for others around me and so that begs the question of how do you determine whether to do something by the book or whether to go off and do it a different way you know i wish there was an easy answer for that it's something that i'm still trying to figure out myself on a daily basis but i would say the best thing to do is to have an open mind because if you have an open mind then at least you can think something out and make a fair decision. I'm somebody who is naturally very rebellious, believe it or not. <laughs> if society says that you need to wear fancy and nice clothes to go to a restaurant, I want to wear my t-shirt, my shorts, and my flip-flops just to stick it to the man and just to show people that if the book says this, I'm going to do it this way. If your if standard procedure is like this, then I'm going to go off and do this. And that's just the way that my brain works. And so sometimes that's good, but other times I get too carried away with it to where I come off as disrespectful. I come off as not caring about my appearance and just negative things. And so that's where I have to be open-minded and kind of have a balance. And then on the opposite end, there's people that want to do everything by the book so badly. They want to have their face buried so far into the rule book that they miss the simplicity, just the simple and the happy things that are right around them. And in that case, it can also be negative if you take it too far. So there comes a point where you have to have balance kind of somewhere in the middle. But And so I think op having an open mind, being open to being wrong and being open to doing things by the book sometimes and then doing things spontaneously a different time will leave you probably in the best case scenario. You know what I mean? I think that this has been a pretty good video. But that about sums it up, guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this Tuesday talk. I really enjoyed making this one. Y'all be sure to let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you guys want to see. Any more topics you want me to discuss for Tuesday and Thursday talks. Hope you all have an incredibly blessed day. And as I always say, your boy Ellie out.